don't know how to you're meant to uh join uh invite people in so i'm glad you got here yeah i was i, I got in and then i was feeling like i was left out let me uh close my door real quick i i, no I for whatever reason i didn't see it didn't come up in the same place or i'm just a little bit blind and the the share audio and video didn't pop up and so i was going hey mark uh waving at <laughs> you and you know making all kinds of noise here in my office that you couldn't see or hear and so uh anyway let me uh it's great to have you here um people because i think the session uh the keynotes are running a little bit over so i think we've got a quiet room to start but um uh, security is one of those topics that people are really keen on so um, i'm sure people will be joining us in a minute yeah so up at the top i see two slash nine is that the two of us as moderators and then three with an eyeball is that three visitors I would have thought three three visitors. If anyone else is in the room, please say hello and let us know. Because when I look at the people in the room, there's only two people listed. So uh, on the side chat. So um, if you are in the room, come. Uh, it's a small group, so we're ready for you. Come and say hello. So we'll see in a second. If they're lurking. Might be. Um, it might be the. Uh, hop in set up yeah yeah there might be an account set up for the hop in so you've got a busy day today we've got two sessions today don't we yeah yeah almost back to back i think there's a short break in between the two and then are you moderating my second session as well uh no actually i'm in the other uh i mean i stay in this room and you jump to another room, sort of the workshop uh, okay. type room, I think. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> You've been jumping in and out with um, other meetings, I imagine. There was some interesting talks about uh, the startup um, uh, keynote was all about security and hacking into healthcare APIs this morning. Did you catch any of that? I did not. Unfortunately, my schedule has just been absolutely nuts. So I finish here and go right into uh, uh, other meetings that I have in I and with customers. Yep. I totally yeah. get it. Um, I would. Uh, I really recommend. Uh, I think it would give you a lot of fodder as far as the importance of security. It was touching on a lot of the things you talked about yesterday. She was able to hack into um, the um, federal healthcare system, uh, healthcare APIs, and be able to see an individual um, patient's record, their total record, and their photos and everything that came with it. You know, all because of the level, all because of the sorts of um, uh, vulnerabilities that you talked about yesterday in your round table. You know, it was like oh, wow. um, uh, and the authorization wasn't clear, all of that sort of stuff. Really great storytelling, um, a really great example for you to prove the importance of what you're offering, I think. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's that's good news. I did have in I guess I had an unmoderated session later. Uh, and I see this as being recorded, but is this going to be replayed? Because if, if it is, I probably should get into the presentation, uh, even though we're running a few minutes late and lacking an audience. Uh, I, no, I think you're absolutely right. Let's get into the presentation because um, this will be then repeated for our European audiences um, and Asia Pacific audiences at a more friendly time slot. So let's um, we've done enough of a warm up. Let's jump into it. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds great. I'm going to Mark. take my camera off so that um you can so it, your screen's bigger. That sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, as soon as I get this done. Oops. Excuse me. Hit the right button here, and let's see. There it is. So. Uh, Hello, everybody. If you're watching this uh, presentation, I'm David Thomason. Uh, I'm with No Name Security, and uh, No Name is a, uh, an API security company. In fact, we are the youngest, fastest, and uh, fastest growing and biggest API security pure, pure play uh, company in the country now. Uh, yesterday, we announced that we closed a $60 million venture capital round. That was our B round. Uh, so, in less than 
uh, eight months, I'll say in approximately seven months, uh, we have closed uh, $85 million in venture capital. So we are uh, taking off like a rocket ship. Um, my background is all in security. I am not uh, an API development expert by any stretch of the imagination. However, I know a lot about pen testing. I know a lot about application security. I've been doing, uh, I've been doing this since the, the 1980s when I was in the Air Force uh, as a developer, writing code uh, to make Air Force System C2 compliant. So uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, security work over the last 35 plus years. Uh, worked with a number of different companies. In fact, my last um, my last stop before coming here to No Name Security was with a company called uh, NSS Labs, and uh, NSS Labs was uh, well known for for testing security uh, products. And a lot of the information that I learned while I was at NSS Labs is what helped me to build uh, this presentation today. So I'm excited to talk to you about why a web application firewall uh, is not enough. Um, if you're joining us uh, late, welcome. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. I, if you have questions, uh, please, please drop them into the uh, chat. Uh, I would love to hear from you uh, and hear what you have to say. Um, we are, uh, um, uh, again, David Thomason with No Name Security and, and this, uh, I have one slide today. So, um, but let me back up just a little bit. Again, my last uh, stop before coming to No Name was a company called NSS Labs. I ran the research department uh, for the last year or so that I was there. Uh, and while I was in uh, the research department uh, as the principal architect, uh, one of the things that we talked about regularly was web application firewalls. And before I even start my, uh, my presentation, one of the things that we found, um, one of the things that we found with web application firewalls is that many organizations uh, are moving away from them, to be honest with you. They're extremely expensive um, compared to many other uh, firewall technology or other, other technologies, other security technologies. Uh, and the, the threat vectors that they protect against uh, and the attack surface that they reduce uh, is not uh, as strong uh, as, as it could be. Um, let me leave it that way. Um, they take a lot of time to manage. They take a lot of time to maintain. Uh, and and I, I want to, I should back up a second and say, first of all, if you have web application firewalls, don't get rid of them. I'm not saying that at all. I think they're a very valuable defense in depth uh, uh, piece of your infrastructure. Uh, the more security, I'm a security guy, so the more security, more layers of security you can have, uh, the better. However, what we have found is that a lot of organizations, especially bigger organizations, were moving away from them. They were finding that the other layers of security that they had were redundant with many of the security layers uh, provided by uh, the application firewall. Additionally, the management and the maintenance and tuning of a web application firewall is significant. It is not something that you can just set it and forget it and leave it and, and never come back to. Uh, organizations need to continually uh, update their web application firewalls. Uh, and again, that gets really expensive. Uh, one of the things that we found was that if you have next generation firewalls and you're looking and, and protecting uh, your web applications with those, and you have some DNS features running and you're running uh, DNS intelligence uh, types of capabilities, you get about 95% of the uh, effectiveness of a web application firewall with just those two technologies already. So then you have to ask yourself, um, if the web application firewall gives you 98% protection, is that extra 3% worth the cost of the web application firewall? Um, for some organizations, the answer is yes, because they don't have uh, the very good next generation firewall and DNS security capabilities uh, in their uh, security stack today. For others, it may be something that they want to look at, that they want to test and, and, and may question uh, how much they want that particular platform. But here at No Name Security, uh, we're so focused on APIs and the ability to discover, analyze, remediate, and test anything associated with APIs, whether it's a vulnerability or whether a threat uh, associated with that API. And so when what the question that we get asked a lot and it's, it's not just around web application firewalls, but also around uh, 
API gateways and those kinds of things as well um, is, is, you know, why do I need you? I already have a web application firewall. Why do I need you? I already have uh, an API gateway. And so let me just take a minute. And again, I said I have one slide. Before I get to that slide, I want to tell you just one more thing about no name. Uh, and, and I guess it should speak for itself. We have no name. Uh, and as a result, we, we, we play off of this a lot. Oftentimes, I do a lot of presentations where we have no slides. <laughs> and so uh, a lot of people ask us, how did we get the name No Name? Well, before we started writing our very first line of code, the founders of our company went to an organization that had about 50 CISOs in the same room. And they asked those 50 CISOs, what are your biggest security concerns today? And if you had to address those, what would be the important things that would have to happen in order to be able to address those security concerns? And again, this was early, early 2019, January, February timeframe, late January, early February, hadn't written a line of code yet. And they said, uh, APIs are on the rise. We have a lot of challenges with APIs. Uh, we're completely uh, blind to the APIs from a security perspective. Uh, the business unit runs and owns that part of the, the, the platform. And oh, by the way, uh, Shy and Oz, what's the name of your company? Well, Shy and Oz, who were presenting to this, this uh, group of CISOs, hadn't decided on a name for the company. They didn't even, weren't even sure what they were going to be developing, what kind of platform they were going to be developing. And uh, they just, they had written on a, on a document that they needed to, uh, to get into the meeting that they were no-name security because they had no name. And uh, they said, well, tell us about your name, no name. They said, well, actually, that is our, you know, we don't have a name. And they said, well, we like no name. So it's stuck and it's been with us ever since. So if you're wondering where that came from, uh, now you've got an idea. Um, so again, uh, why application firewalls uh, are not enough uh, is our subject for today. So back to my uh, uh, low level marketing, if you will. Uh, if you take a screenshot of this right now, you will have the content for, for this presentation. And essentially, I'll be telling stories around some of these things uh, for the next 20 minutes or so. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this really lays it all out. You know, wh what's the difference? Well, as I mentioned before, web application firewalls need to be tuned. They take a lot of management. Uh, they typically talk about how many full-time employees, how many FTEs is it going to take to manage uh, an enterprise organization's web application firewalls. Uh, I've worked with some very large energy companies <clears throat> that had uh, as many as four people responsible just for managing the web application firewalls with their organization. And those are four highly trained, expensive cybersecurity professionals. Uh, these aren't interns. These are these are real jobs that are, that are big and important. Um, with the API security platform, with the no-name platform, it's self-learning. Uh, and so there's absolutely, there's very little or no tuning that has to be involved. You know, uh, we pride ourselves in the fact that uh, with our uh, capabilities, we can see every single API in the environment uh, and then tell you about how that API is behaving, what it's, how it's being used, uh, statistics on its performance, all kinds of things like that. And at the end of the day, uh, you don't have anything to do except for watch for any issues that might come up associated with that particular API. We have application firewalls. Well, they're designed for a well-protected network perimeter. Like I said, they're a great defense in depth, layered approach. Uh, highly recommend putting them behind the firewall, behind the load balancer or in front of the load balancer behind the firewall. Maybe they do the load balancer in some cases. Um, but at the end of the day, they are limited in their ability to find threats and vulnerabilities throughout the network. They can't see it unless it goes through uh, the, AP, the, the web application firewall. And the interesting part about this is because of the applications that typically run through the web application firewall, uh, they're more often deployed in, uh, in line, but yet in a passive mode, in a non-blocking mode. So they still are a bump in the wire. They still are a potential uh, opportunity to have to fail over to another link, which means you have to have two of them if you're going to be in line. Uh, but they're also uh, 
you know, the, you spend a lot of money to then just get a lot of alerts uh, and deal with false positives and things like that. Uh, in the API security platform that, that we use at No Name, uh, that we've designed at No Name, we find the threats and vulnerabilities throughout the network, whether it's at the perimeter or inside, internal, uh, it doesn't matter. We look at all of the threats and the vulnerabilities. And that web application firewall is really designed to look for threats. It doesn't find vulnerabilities uh, at all. And so when you're looking at the entire estate of your APIs, you have to look at your API gateways. You have to look at the configuration of your load balancers. You have to look at the configuration of the hosts uh, that are serving up these APIs. You know, are they using the right certificates uh, for and credentials? Uh, and do they have public IP addresses when they should only have an internal IP address? All of those kinds of things have to be evaluated. So uh, the next one is typically deployed in line, like I said. And at that point, they could impact application performance. Uh, it is not uncommon for uh, web application man managers, and this is part of the reason why they have to have uh, a team of people to manage web application firewalls, is you know, prime time for buying things online is in the evening. So you can't have a person that works all day long you know, managing that web application firewall in the evening when the people who are buying the you know your product online uh, are are most active. That thing goes down you know during prime time buying season, you know Black Friday, you could be out of a, a significant amount of revenue uh, should it be blocking something that it shouldn't be blocking, or should it just go down and uh, and not have the ability to uh, flip over to an HA or a high availability uh, segment. With uh, with our API security platform, it's deployed out of band, 100% out of band. And this does typically out of band. And the tr it's always deployed out of band. Not sure why typically got stuck in there. Um, what that means is that we don't impact performance at all. No latency, uh, no performance and impact on any of the platforms within the environment. Uh, and as a result, we can't block traffic. And even if we go down, your traffic continues to uh, to flow within the environment. So that's very important from an API security platform. If it has the potential to bring down your server, bring down your application, or even stop an API, you have to wonder what what uh, what the ramifications are of that, should there be a bug or an error uh, in your security platform. Uh, web application firewall typically only works well on well-defined HTTP, HTTPS ports. Uh, now, again, this is part of the management. When you set up an endpoint and it's on an unusual port, somebody has to go into that application, uh, application firewall and establish and open that port. It's another open port, it's another available, uh, it's another management uh, aspect of the application firewall that has to take place uh, that is not necessary with an API security platform like No Name. In this particular case, we see all of the APIs. It doesn't matter what port that they're going over. If it's HTTP and RESTful, SOAP, GraphQL, gRPC, which gRPC is RPC XML and RPC uh, JSON, on any port, doesn't matter. We'll identify it, we'll let you know that it's there, we'll catalog it, uh, we'll define it for you, give it back to you in a Swagger UI if you want, uh, all that information. So it's not necessary that you have uh, that you be uh, on specific HTTP ports in order to uh, in order to uh, um, in order to protect those uh, APIs. Also, web application firewalls uh, are most are mostly web browsers. Uh, you know, the clients are mostly web browsers, and automated traffic and bots can be fa fairly easily detected. And clients are mostly, and for, for the API security platform, clients are mostly other machines and applications. And it's difficult to exclude the automated traffic and bots uh, in, uh, in the API from the API platform. So there is some value on the web application uh, for identifying automated traffic and bots. Those are a lot easier. Um, I can also tell you, uh, you know, from experience that there are a number of uh, in attacks, for example, like cross-site scripting and SQL injection that are pretty easily detected 
coming from the outside and going through a web application firewall. The challenge with a web application firewall though, and if you do any kind of um, uh, searching around for evasion techniques for web application firewalls, one of the first things that should pop up uh, is uh, path traversal or directory traversal uh, evasions. And this is simply a way of defining, if you don't know what this is, uh, this is simply a way of defining the path to an API by going deep, deep into some long path that probably doesn't exist. And then using a series of dot, dot, slash, dot, slash, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, and, and basically backing up in that path with a number of characters to get you back into a place where you can then be past the firewall uh, and it won't catch it, you know? And unfortunately, most web application uh, firewalls for whatever reason seem to be vulnerable to directory traversal um, evasions. Uh, they have some capability to detect them and, and even to block uh, a directory traversal evasion. But most of the time, there are simple ways to get around it. Uh, you just have to be a little bit creative uh, and, and, it, and it doesn't take long for a, an attacker to figure out to, how to get uh, around that web application firewall. Once you're around the web application firewall, none of the detection is gonna work. Cross-site scripting, SQL injection, all of those kinds of things won't look, won't even be seen once it's deep enough within the URI that the web, that the, uh, uh, that the directory traversal has gotten it past the, the, uh, the web application firewall. So once it's far enough in there, all of a sudden those kinds of things, the cross-site scripting and the SQL injection, the cross-site uh, uh, reference forgery, all of those are, uh, are, are now the, the web applications firewalls blind to them uh, once you get past that. So I got just a minute or two to, uh, to ask for questions, um, but let me wrap up by saying with the API security platform, with the no-name platform, um, we're looking for attacks that are not easily detectable in complete legitimate requests. Things like excessive data exposure, broken object level authorization, a change in authorization or authentication uh, within the environment, or a change in or, or maybe even the, 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 uh, the change where authentication isn't even required anymore. Just recently in one of our proof of concept tests with a customer, we found uh, a number of different APIs that while they had what appeared to be very good authentication, we found out that it wasn't actually validated on the, in the backend application. And as a result, uh, a user could authenticate or uh, copy the API and, or excuse me, copy the request, even re and then just pull the authentication out or dump uh, totally fake information into uh, the authentication token and it would accept it and they would be able to get access to anything in the environment. So those are the kinds of things that happen all the time. And I would love to take questions now. I've got a few minutes. Um, if you, uh, there's anything you'd like to ask, happy to, uh, to hear those. Thanks, David. Um, uh, this is really thorough overview. And I think um, it, it's been one of those topics I've heard um, bubbling up recently. You know, people are thinking web application firewalls aren't secure enough, but they're not sure what they need to do or what to do next. So this was really thorough overview. When you talk about um, that need for API security platform and some of those um, sort of legitimate ways or, you know, semi-legitimate ways in that then are um, bad actors, if you like. Are there any particular um, uh, industry sectors that are more vulnerable at the moment or where that, that presents a bigger <laughs> business risk? You know, uh, anybody that, that produces a lot of APIs, uh, we have found is at risk. Um, we have gone into organizations that have absolutely excellent shift left uh, processes. They've got a CI/CD pipeline that includes, you know, some very rigorous testing. Uh, and yet, every single time we go into these organizations, we're still finding that there are uh, human errors, uh, either in the programming of the API, in the way it's deployed, or in simply uh, 
legacy APIs that don't exist. Uh, right. if, they de if they depend on a lot of APIs today, they probably have had APIs for years and even before they had API gateways and web application firewalls. And when that's the case, you know, uh, herding up those APIs, if you will, or wrangling up those APIs and getting them all into the API gateway and into the web application firewall, that's a chore in and of itself. And we come across uh, very sophisticated, very uh, organizations with very mature security practices that still don't have uh, a good grasp on even uh, where their APIs are and what they do. And so it's very, very important that you get that discovery part done first. And that's certainly a big challenge that a web application firewall uh, just can't address. Thanks. Yeah, um, really great food for thought. Do you want to post your, we better jump off with the next roundtable coming up in a minute, but do you want to post your um, email in the chat now so that people can, uh, share, can follow up with you to ask some more personal questions or find out more about No Name Security? There we go, David T at nonamesecurity.com. Um, great, fantastic. Thanks for the walkthrough and the and and the look at the uh, you know at, at that issue around um, web application firewalls. Not let's not be um, let's not rest on the rest um, on that thing thinking of like that that's enough that we need. You know, so I think you've really brought home that message around you know really comprehensive API security approach. Hey, thanks a lot, Mark. I appreciate it. And I look forward to catching up with you later. Cheers. Ciao. Hey, take care. Bye-bye.